I'm heartbroken by this, guys, okay? Absolutely destroyed, because frankly, I wanted to see the conclusion of the story of Chimere and Osha, and I wanted to see what Venestra was gonna lie to Yoda about, and how many more things Leslie Headland could possibly screw up at Star Wars, but hey, Lucasfilm might not, at this current point in time, have plans to develop a second season for The Acolyte, but I'll be like a several dozen other Acolyte fans out there and pray that The Acolyte gets renewed. Ratings and interactions be damned. We need the continuation of this High Republic story. There were so many unresolved conflicts at the conclusion of the first season, like... Well, we, we don't need to remember them because they're all so forgettable. Uh, it is rumored that Lucasfilm currently has no plans to develop a second season of Leslie Headland's The Acolyte. Gosh darn. The latest rumor comes from scooper WDW Pro. He details, What I'm told by a source who has been correct in the past regarding Lucasfilm with very high specificity of correctness, aka go back folks and listen and tell us, Oh, listen to us tell you that the Ray movie was going to be happening right before they announced it, and that Daisy Ridley would walk across the stage at Star Wars Celebration right before it happened, yes. And also, you know, Kathleen Kennedy is going to be leaving at any point in time. Uh, said source tells me that Leslie Headland does not, as of right now, have a contract for a second season of The Acolyte. Said source tells me that following the finale of season one, then the results that may have been coming in weeks ahead, this decision may have been coming in weeks ahead of the finale. There are no current plans to develop a season two. That could change. Kathleen Kennedy can always make a decision as long as she has a contract, but we believe that her contract, yo, they, uh, they did the meme. You guys are doing the meme. The Kathleen Ke oh, her contract's going to be up, but she's not going to be renewing it. I mean, come on. Kathleen Kennedy, dude, she's, she's actually Palpatine, okay? She's going to be there a long, long, long after we're all dead and gone, okay? She has discovered many techniques that some may deem to be unnatural. Hell, she's probably, just like Plagueis, been inspired by the coven of lesbian space witches to find a way to manipulate the Force, or the Thread, the Thread in this case and uncover the secret of eternal life. So no, Kathleen Kennedy's not going anywhere, and even if she does, look at the people that are going to inherit the throne. Dave Filoni, who signed off on all this nonsense. Jon Favreau, who writes scripts like he's banging together a couple of action figures. Do you think that stuff's going to get any better? Absolutely not. Yeah, and it may be uh, continued past that, but that's uh, when the current contract would end, but Kathleen Kennedy could go ahead and approve that. But as of right now, we are told there are no plans, no movements, and nothing in development for Season 2. My source tells me everything in Season 1 indicates that they did plan on doing a Season 2, especially the way that the show ends. Yeah, I mean, everything is left open-ended. Maze with the Jedi, she needs to rediscover her memories, okay? Venestra's running this big cover-up, you know, she's key jangling over there with Yoda. You had Plagueis peeking out from around a corner. You have Chimere and Osha holding hands at the end. And there's so many other stories that we'll get into on that one because even though the door might be closed right now at Lucasfilm, the rumor comes in the wake of Headland begging individuals to launch a social media campaign to get Disney to green light, yes, the second season. Because Headland, well, she's been out there on, an, on the interview circuit. And oh boy, if you thought that a lot of her previous interviews were cringy, well, she saved some of the best for last. And we were talking recently about the claim that, yeah, Osha killed Sol in the Acolyte because he was imposing benign sexism on her. Yeah, and her claim that even even when she was force choking, the first canonical use of the force choke, very stunning, very brave, Sol was even removing her agency by saying that he's okay, he's alright. That was still his consent to her killing him was removing some of her agency and he was doing that because she's a girl and that that's sexist. Leslie Headland's a total idiot. She was talking to Collider here and saying, shifting gears, one of the most popular questions that I, that I got to ask you from Twitter was, what do fans need to do to ensure a second season? Truly. Any online support and love you can send the show. It's a little tricky because of the way that the internet works. But if you enjoyed the show, I did for all of the wrong reasons. And you want to see uh, more of that story. Any support that you give to the show on social media platforms would be super helpful. Sending love to the cast too. You've seen what happened to Hayden Christensen, what he went through. 
nothing really nothing but adulation really but okay and then maybe i don't know just being greeted with the cringy sand memes uh, he's getting the love now but give the love now if you enjoyed the performances oh no that that's one thing you can say about this show there were no good performances like if you're looking forward to the second season for that like the soul he won't be back unless they're going to do more flashbacks, even though that is kind of the hallmark of the acolyte at this point in time. Untraditional storytelling. Is that the way that her headland's going to go ahead and try to pitch this? She's just such an auteur, guys. She can't be pigeonholed into one way to tell her very, very important story. The story that, remember, Kathleen Kennedy said was a perfect Star Wars story. But yeah, Soul was the best, and he's not coming back. Everybody else was just cardboard cutouts with awkwardly large lightsabers like you can see it in the picture right there like shit's huge bro it's like they're swinging around full cans of coke with a light beam at the end of it like what the hell are you doing it's trash from there headland stated encourage your friends to watch the show no 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 i don't hate them that much a lot of my work has been word of mouth yeah no i'm sure a lot of your work has involved the work the use of your mouth uh we were talking about the review bombing so just telling people don't pay attention to the imdb score the rotten tomato score the metacritic score any review site scores don't pay attention to that no 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 just um listen and believe we have a very important story to tell uh, she she then stated if you enjoyed it tell people it kind of seems like it's that it's a, like that it's a sort of basic but i think what's interesting is that nowadays if you're a show you're rarely going online being like i like this show oh you see that all the time like the shills are more vocal than the critics in most cases it's just the critics you know the people looking at that going "Oof, that was really bad here's my list of examples they get shouted down as being toxic and hateful all you do is hate things it's like no my eyes work and my ears are functional and i can go ahead and spot a bad story being told and give you specific examples for it we've got way too much toxic positivity going on out there just people clapping and supporting nonsense because oh my god that's a light say it went red that's red and oh i know that that's the green guy i like the green guy in the star wars movies arr, 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 arr. you're telling me that stuff is rare at all of those stupid reaction channels that are you know littering youtube at this point in time that low effort crap where it's just all positive we just need to get hype about something and then admit it's crap a few weeks later after your coverage is concluded that shit is far more toxic than anybody going oof this was really bad but yes in the words of leslie headland you watch it you move on maybe you mention it to somebody over dinner and be like oh i just binged this show it was fun lee jung jay is an awesome actor yeah you should watch him in a good show like squid game it's usually comes up to uh, comes up that way as opposed to going online and saying i love this show so if you did love this show then pivot and be appreciative yeah people People who actually like unironically like the acolyte or at least shill it online don't have anybody to have dinner with so yeah i could imagine that that's likely a fairly a very believable story for her yeah man just looking at the numbers obviously it was never ever ever gonna get a traditional second season okay at least in the way that you would green light previous shows when you just compare it to other star wars projects it ranks behind everything else and or mandalorian season three is worse performing than every single one of those even disney plus's best performing star wars tv show obi-wan hasn't gotten a second season and don't say just because well we're not entirely sure the story that we could possibly tell there i mean we got season one of the acolyte and they could barely string together a coherent story for eight episodes hasn't stopped them before yeah falling off of the nielsen ratings in less than three weeks falling to the bottom half of the top 10 for original streaming shows on the luminate tracking stats it's not a good sign and i'm still hoping and so is leslie because she is out there you know she's talking to collider she's talking to the hollywood reporter she's talking to new york magazine vulture specifically and she's talking about and i quote a positive corruption arc what so just piggybacking off of her original idea for the show you wanted multiple seasons uh was this designed to be a series finale a lot of the things are left open-ended and i would love to continue exploring i do feel however that uh we had to tell a complete story in the streaming era a lot of first seasons are essentially the first act of a story i wanted to tell a whole story and there were a lot of little things uh like about how vernestra being manny's character's master yeah i guess you confirmed that right there like that was another open-ended 
potential mystery, but hey, if you want to just go ahead and admit that right there, fantastic. Osha making the decision that she makes yet to kill Sol and become the acolyte for Gaimir. The legacy characters that show up, yeah, that you went ooh in front of the camera and everybody just rolled their eyes at. I definitely, uh, I designed it to launch into another chapter, but I was like, don't assume we're getting a second season. I learned that on Terriers. What the blue hell is that? Sean Ryan, Ted Griffin were like, uh, we've got to throw it all in there. And then here we go. In the finale, you introduce a cameo from Darth Plagueis watching over May and the Stranger. He's the Sith Lord Master to Palpatine, only mentioned briefly in the films but something of a fan favorite to those who know and those are a lot of memes of palpatine's monologue to Alan, or anakin in episode three why did you want to involve him uh these are uh, two other people having gone through this positive corruption arc i beg your pardon anakin went through a positive corruption arc what was positive about him falling to the dark side i what holy shit she is stupid and coming together in a joining of forces and a romantic pairing yes the romantic pairing between palpatine and anakin skywalker we always wanted to introduce plagueis as a forebo her foreboding complication we know plagueis's appearance ends up being Oh, Apprentice, sorry, ends up being Palpatine. So it would be interesting to see how these uh, two uh, red lights, it, it's red. See, that's their defining character. They're red, red lightsabers carrying warriors fit into the story. They both went through positive corruption arcs. Posi Osha and Chimere is just like what Palpatine and Plagueis or Palpatine and Anakin. Leslie Headland. This is why we need a second season. Mostly because you you can't even write stupidity this comprehensive we need her out here on the interview circuit we need amanda stenberg cutting new pathetic diss tracks boy she has been awfully quiet recently but i can't wait i can't wait for her next release her next role her next interview because i would imagine we're going to be getting some insight and wisdom that we are going to miss moving forward in star wars y'all excited for skeleton crew uh spoiler nobody's excited for skeleton crew nobody even knows what the hell that is so with all that said Thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.